we're back. And we're back today. We're going to take a, a trip to the old historical dockyards. I thought we were going to Ireland for a second. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> we're, we're, we're nipping down, right? <clears throat> You've been to Portsmouth. I have been to Portsmouth, yes, I like Portsmouth. So you know about the historical dockyards down I there? I do indeed know about the historical dockyards. Marvellous. Right, you know the old shippies used to go in there. Right? Yeah. There were some boats and there are still some ships there. Oh, indeed. Mary Rose and HMS Victory. Which, name but two. which is still, I think, a ship in the Royal Navy. I think it hasn't been fully decommissioned, has it? I think it's still in, in the Royal Navy, yeah. Admiral awesome. Nelson's ship. Absolutely awesome ship. If you've never been, go. Very interesting. Mm. Um, and there's a huge thing down there, a bit other than you know military history, um, about what the navy used to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know when when the sun never set on the British Empire, yada 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 yada. Um, the navy were round the world, and they were protecting merchants, and they were protecting, you know the kind of crown's interest around the world. Now, one of the things that they used to do was look after the spice trade. You know, because there was a lot of money in the old spice trade back then. It made a lot of people very rich. Um, so, of course, they were interested. Okay. Why not? People in charge of the, uh, the Navy were probably shareholders, shall we say. Um... <laughs> Same as it is today, you know. Um, <laughs> I thought we said we'd never get political on here. So there, there really is a rich history there. So when I saw this chap come up, Spice Island Chili. And he's got a range of sources. Uh, I think he's got five, I think. I think it's five sources. <coughs> that he does. Um, this is one of them. This is Centurion 1744. And if you look on the uh, the website, it's our vintage, our classic, our flagship of the fleet. Spice Island Chili brings you Centurion 1744, Scotch bonnet and spice rum. It's broadsidingly good. Mm. Well, we'll be the judge of how good it is, but... It certainly looks the part. In here, we've got Scotch bonnet chilli, 45%. That's quite a lot of chilli. It's going to be warm. Mm. It's got peppers in there. Cider vinegar, sugar, garlic, spiced rum, 1%, <laughs> which is disappointingly low. <laughs> <laughs> I like spiced rum. Um, Salt and a bit of xanthan, just to uh, thicken it up. Xanthan gum. I just love the artwork. Mm. It, the it's great, and... the, the kind of line drawing, you know, the, what is it, you described it as etching. Etching kind of, yeah. Would you like to see my etchings? Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It says, try it with prawns, chicken, vegetable stir fry, beef, guacamole, cheese on toast, anything you dare. What about anything I don't dare? Right. Oops. But yeah, I mean, I mean, we love Scotch bonnet sauces. Oh. They're actually, well, it's your favourite chilli, isn't it? One of them, yes. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, yeah, it's nice to have good Scotch bonnet sauces. So we're looking here at this bottle. Look which at the way that clings. Just under half full of chilli, like pods, Scotch bonnets. Um, and you can see the goodies it? in there, can't you? This this looks almost to have the consistency of ketchup. Yeah, it's almost sort of passata kind of sort of um, texture to it, isn't it? A beautiful colour as well. Ah, so we've lost him. Sorry. Wow. Are you going to hand that over? No. <laughs> let, let go of the bottle. It's okay. I'll let you rub it back. Don't worry. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, it's like peppers. She the mocked bonnet, me. The garlic. She mocked me. The look. But yeah, the consistency. I mean, when you you show the pour, that's going to be. Look at it. It's. Because quite often you'll see Scotch bonnet sauces are quite um, sort of thinner, sort of more sort of ferments like or Tabasco y type. I'm, I'm thinking. Louisiana hot sauce sort of thing. But that oh is, my god, it's like a landslide. Oh my god, look at that. I'm thinking this is going to have yeah, some heat to it. You can put the spoon in. I'm going to put the spoon in. <laughs> you can do it, look. Yeah, wide neck bottle. Wide neck bottle, get your spoon in. Just I get a gonna, straw. I was going to say no chance of drips, but that, look at that. I mean, you can probably see that's a chunk of something yep, on my spoon, and it's about to go off. on my put hand. Put it in your mouth, well. quick. No. <laughs> What a mouthfeel. Do you know the texture I got? And you're probably not going to actually be able to understand this. Or you may. But if you ever had like a a fresh um, tomato or red pepper soup. Um, where you've just got that kind of like the thick kind of pulpy feel to it. But you've got all of the different ingredients and there's there's bits. That's the consistency of that. You actually have to, you almost have to chew, don't mm. you? And you want to because you get <coughs> all of the flavour out. It's not just a kind of round the mouth swallow. You've got a really nice sort of constant kind of underlone, undertone of like the garlic. The red pepper is really prominent. The scotch bonnet is there. In a, you know, considering the percentage of Scotch Bonnet in there, it's not actually overpowering the other ingredients. You've got a nice balance of heat to it. And I think there's that sweetness. It's going to come a little bit from the sugar, but I think mostly from the, the red pepper. That would actually make a very good salsa or mixed in with, um, with a hummus. Because that'll make an awesome red pepper and scotch bonnet hummus. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> God dear. Right. Um, peppers. You know, scotch bonnet. I'm guessing they're like you know, bell peppers. Mm. Um, that have been used in there as well. Getting a little bit of the vinegar. Getting the garlic. Right I'm looking for the spice rum. If I'm honest, I'm not getting it. No. I've but no doubt there is some in there, but I'm not, it's not coming through. It's not standing alone as a flavour. Mm. Um, Consistency wise, It's, it's almost like a liquid kind of pico de gallo or um, like you say a salsa. It's got it's got the chunks. Mm. We like chunky. Um and that would absolutely make sense as to why wide neck bottle. Yep. Um definitely. You could comfortably almost use that as a ketchup, couldn't you? I think in that that kind of sort of that condiment thing, you know, I would I would quite happily have that with sort chips of grilled or, meats. Yeah, but yeah. I would I would happily be sitting there dipping my chips into that, like you say, or on a baked potato. See, I I can see this working with pretty much anything um, that you want to put it with. I don't I can't see anything that it wouldn't work with. You could stir that into a soup. Give it a bit of heat. Um, you could put that into a stew. You know, if you were add, adding uh, like 
I mean, I don't because it's tomatoes, but if you're adding tomato into a, a stew or a uh, chilli, mm -hmm. you know, you could put a, a healthy dose of that in there. Um, I could see that going... So I would almost use that as a, an alternative to like a tomato sauce for pasta. Yeah, I could like see that. Coating. I could see that going on a pizza base. Yeah. Um, pretty much anywhere. I mean, can you imagine, like, again, tomatoes, I can't do it, but can you imagine using that instead of a tomato sauce in something like a lasagna? Oh, God, yeah. It would be that thing. You, I have you that could... sort of bechamel there to, mm. to come, because obviously you'd use a fair bit. Um, to have that bechamel there just to calm it down a bit and just yeah. layer it on. But it, it would make an excellent sort of passata substitute on that basis, wouldn't it? It's, mm. it's great flavour. Fantastic. I think you just need to sell it by the bucket, though. <coughs> it was? Um, probably for me it was a one and a half pushing a two. I think, you know, the quantity that I would probably be putting over my food with that, it would quickly get to a two for me yeah i think a two um but it's it's a nice heat it's not a you know a face scorcher it's quite a, a gentle consistent heat that i wouldn't be overly worried about giving it to older children i wouldn't have it for younger um but you know sort of 10 11 year olds who don't mind a little bit of, of warmth i think they'd be all right with that yeah, I mean, I'd, I would, I would give it a two. Well, I wouldn't say it was family friendly. Um, there is a little bit of, well, a little bit too much heat uh, for people who aren't chili aficionados. Um, if you liked a little bit of spice, you'd be fine with this. Um, you don't need to be a you know hardcore chili head to enjoy it. Um, I'm really quite pleased I found this mm. this company, Spice Island. Well, if this is the uh, the first one that we've tried, mm. and this is kind of an indication of the, you know, what to expect from a quality perspective, I'm very much looking forward to trying. You'll, some you'll more. love the scorpion one. Then. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, SpiceIslandChili.com is where you need to go to go and discover your own. Naval Legends, um, this, you really need to check the website out, there's a lot of work gone into the website, um, and a lot of, uh, shall we say, creative writing on the descriptions and the history mm. and stuff, very, very good, um, yeah, check them out, spiceislandchili.com, hmm, good stuff, but I think that's enough from us for now, indeed. So thank you ever so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. And we'll see you in the next one.